What's up everybody? My name is Eric. Welcome to my channel, Eric the Tutor. What's up everybody? My name is Eric. Welcome to my channel, Eric the Tutor. Today, we're going to be going through practice problems for your midterm coming up, your first midterm. Okay, this is for Child 101, but this applies to anybody taking anatomy. So we're going to be focusing on the upper limb, the pelvis, perineum, and I'm just going to give you guys as many questions as possible and try to do it as quickly as we can. So my answers might not be in as much depth, um, and that's just because I want to try to give you guys the questions, the answers, and a, a brief explanation. Okay, so let's jump into it. The spinal cord, and then you guys can read the choices, give them a try, pause it, and then come back to the video and unpause it, okay? So the spinal cord begins at the level of the foramen magnum. That looks good to me. Uh, has eight cervical spinal nerves. That's right. So we, you know, it, they could have asked about uh, the number of vertebrae. Um, so we have seven cervical vertebrae, but we have eight cervical spinal nerves. And it ends at the level of the disc between L4 and L5. That's not going to be right. So that's going to be between L1 and L2. So our answer choice here is going to be D, just A and B. Let's move on to the next one. So for the next question, here's number two. A doctor wants you, the chief resident, to insert a catheter into a patient's bladder. The doctor asks you which structures the catheter will pass. Your answer is blank. So we're working from the outside trying to get into the bladder. So normally when we talk about the pathway, we start from the bladder and we're working our way out of the body. Um, but now you have to kind of think backwards. So if we're thinking from the outside, we can immediately cross off answer choice A because we know that's starting from the bladder, but we're asking how do we get to, to the bladder from the outside. So the next thing we have here, this looks good. We have an external urethral meatus um, working our way inward. Then we're going to pass the spongy urethra. Um, oh, but here it says prostatic urethra first, so that's not going to work. Um, here we get that spongy urethra. That looks good. And then we have, uh-oh, prostatic urethra. We know that if we're working our way into the body, that we should actually go external urethral meatus, penile or spongy urethra, and then the membranous urethra. Once we reach the membranous urethra, then we should reach the prostatic urethra. And then finally, the internal urethral orifice will allow us to enter the bladder. So our answer choice is going to be C. What's up guys, we're on our next question. So a patient is bleeding to, to very painful external hemorrhoids. You suspect which of the following to most likely be involved. So we have A, autonomic innervation is likely causing her pain. We can cross that off because if we know that we have painful sensation, also tells us that we're dealing with external hem hemorrhoids. Um, we know that we have a pectinate line, and below the pectinate line is where we have actually, we can feel pain. And we know if we're above that pectinate line, then we actually can't feel the hemorrhoid. So that would be an internal hemorrhoid. So we wouldn't be able to feel that hemorrhoid. Um, here we're feeling it, it's very painful. So we know that it has something to do with the somatic nervous system instead of the autonomic nervous system. If it was above and they couldn't feel it, then this would be the autonomic nervous system. So we can actually cross this one out. So it's not going to be A. Um, B, involuntary contraction of muscle is the main cause of her pain. Also not going to be the case here because again, if it was involuntary, involuntary would be above the pectinate line and they wouldn't be able to feel it. Also, it's if it's involuntary, then we can't actually consciously contract that muscle. So B here just does not make sense. Okay. C, perineal body, um, kind of irrelevant here, but a, definitely a distractor. Um, perineal body, we know, is a source where a lot of muscles are going to attach in that pelvic diaphragm. So possibly students might get confused and accidentally put perineal body as an answer. Um, we know the perineal body has multiple attachments, um, including the external anal sphincter, the bulbospongiosis muscle, and the levator ani muscles. 
So here, um, again, a distractor, so not what, we do, what we're dealing with. So now that we know the answer choice is not C, we can actually cross off D as well. So D says anal canal superior to the pectinate line. But if we actually think of our pectinate line, right? So we have a pectinate line. Above the pectinate line, we can't feel anything. It's autonomic innervation. Um, and below, so that would be internal hemorrhoids. Below the pectinate line, we can feel that pain. It's going to be somatic motor and sensory innervation. Specifically, we're innervated by our inferior rectal nerve. And the blood supply below the pectinate line is going to be the inferior and middle rectal arteries. So our answer choice here is going to be E, and that's because we're inferior to that pectinate line. We have external hemorrhoids, and they're very painful. Okay, let's move on to the next one. What's up, guys? We're on to the next one. So which muscles make up the pelvic diaphragm? So we have the piriformis, obturator internus, levator ani, and coccygeus. So we know that the pelvic diaphragm is made up of our levator ani muscles as well as our coccygeus. So this is going to be our answer choice here. We also know that the pelvic diaphragm is supported by our perineal body. So perineal body is going to be very important. Um, that's going to help support those muscles. And we can move on to the next one. So the external anal sphincter is A, made up of smooth muscle or is involuntary. We have skeletal muscle and assisted by the puborectal sling. So if I know it's the external anal sphincter, then I know I can consciously contract that muscle. So it can't be smooth muscle. It's not involuntary. So we know it has to be skeletal muscle. So we're either between C or we're between F. So D says is assisted by the puborectal sling. That's exactly correct. So our puborectal sling can actually support and assist with our external anal sphincter. So our best answer choice here is going to be both assisted by the puborectal sling, made up of skeletal muscle, also going to be voluntary. All right? So F is our answer choice. All right, guys, we got another practice problem here. It says, this artery arises from the second part of the axillary artery and helps supply blood to the breast. We have all these answer choices out. I would make sure you guys remember your mnemonic, screw the lawyers, save all patients. And that shows us the different parts of the branches coming off the axillary artery. So here, let's say this is my three parts here, right? So let's say this is part number one and two and three. We have screw the lawyer, save all patients, all right? So in this case, we're focused with blood supply going to the breast area. So that means the only blood supply that we learned that goes along this area, which is kind of near our serratus anterior muscles. So I know my lateral thoracic artery helps supply that region. Deep brachial artery is too far down, so that would be way down here once we're actually, um, so we have the brachial artery and then we're gonna have a deep brachial artery branch um, that's gonna go deep on the anterior compartment of the arm, so it can't be that one. And then it can't be our subscapular artery. We know our subscapular artery is gonna split into a circumflex scapular artery and a thoracodorsal artery. So not going to be thoracodorsal, it's going to go to the latissimus dorsi, and uh, it's not going to be our subscapular artery, which splits into a circumflex scapular artery, which wraps around the posterior side of the scapula and actually supplies the supraspinatus and the infraspinatus muscles. So it won't be that one. So, and it's not going to be our anterior or posterior humeral circumflex arteries because those go around the head of the humerus, right? So not going to be that. And then it can't be a nerve, right? So this is asking about the blood supply. So this is, again, just a distractor, long thoracic nerve. Um, that's actually going to be our lateral thoracic.